to the end of our unit on quadratic functions. Today we're going to analyze once again the graphs of quadratic functions, but we're going to do it in a different form. So what we're going to be analyzing by looking at the function is which direction our graph will be opening our quadratic function, how wide our graph's going to be, how skinny our graph's going to be, and if our function is going to move on either the x or the y axis by doing translations. All right, so in order for us to understand all of these family of parabolas, we need to first understand the parent graph. So family of graph displays one or more similar characteristics. You can see that these are all similarly shaped, but they're moved around our coordinate graph. Our parent graph is that graph that was the original function before any translations, stretching, or compressing happens. It's the function before I put any plus 5x's or I move it to the left and I move it to down and I put any addition, subtractions, multiplication, or division values in there. All right, so our parent graph, you remember at the beginning of this unit, we would just kind of plot, make a table and plot points. So I'm going to pick one centered on the origin. So when I plug negative 2 in, I get negative 2 squared is 4, negative 1 squared is 1, 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, and 2 squared is 4. Now this table of values for our parent graph is actually going to follow us through this lesson. So we have negative 2, 4, you can see plotted on here, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 4. I can continue this and graph 3 squared, which would give me 9. Negative 3 squared gives me also a positive 9. And you can see that my quadratic equation opens up. All right, now when I move over to this table over here, you can see that these are my quadratic equations, but they're moved around the coordinate plane. And what makes them move are putting in addition and subtraction into the function. So you'll notice this x plus 5 squared moved to the left. This x squared plus 2 moved up. And this x minus 4 squared minus 6 moves down. So what those functions are is they're actually written in vertex form. Vertex form is going to find our vertex for us very easily and show the movement without having to plug values into a table. All right, so you're familiar with understanding quadratic equations in standard form. So standard form is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Notice that in vertex form we've kind of moved our numbers and values around a little bit. We pulled the a out, we made a perfect square, and we have a k outside. So we're going to talk in an h inside and a k outside. So we're going to talk about what those do exactly. But you're going to see here that the h and the k is going to make up our vertex. In addition to that, that h is also going to be where the axis of symmetry is located. Notice that in our standard vertex form that this is a minus and this is a plus. If those are changed, then our movement changes direction by any means. All right, so let's break down these variables a, h, and k a little bit more. So our h and our k creates the vertex. That's where the axis of symmetry is going to be located. Now, let's talk about what that k on the outside of the function does. On the outside of the function, you get a translation. And it is either a vertical or a horizontal translation. But the k specifically 
is the vertical translation because it's on the outside. Now what, what I mean by outside is the squared part becomes my actual function. Because the plus k is outside of that squaring, that means that we're going to have a vertical movement. Now what happens here is if k is positive, then the movement is going to move up. We're going to translate it up. That's where you get the red graph. If k is less than zero or negative, then our k or graph is going to move down. So this is going to be if I have a plus k, this is going to be if I have a minus k. All right, now let's talk about inside of the function. So inside of the function is the h. And notice that this is a negative. All right, so in order for our h to be positive, that still has to stay negative. So when our h is positive, our function is going to move to the right when we have a positive h. When our h is negative, we're going to have to move our graph to the left, which is a negative h. But notice that it would be whatever the opposite of this sign is going to be because that's what's going to make this positive or negative. So if this is a negative h, it's actually positive and moving to the right. If this says plus h, that means that had to be minus a negative and then moves to the left. All right, the last thing we're gonna talk about is what does A do? So A does a couple things. A for one tells us which direction our parabola opens. So if A is positive, our parabola opens up. And we have that minimum value that we learned earlier in the unit. When A is negative, our parabola opens down because it gets reflected over top of the x-axis. So when A is positive, it opens up. When A is negative, it opens down. Now, in addition to that, A also tells me how my function or how my quadratic equation stretches or compresses. In other words, does it get skinnier or does it get fatter? All right, so it says if the absolute value of A is greater than one, so that means we're not gonna worry about the sign of it because the sign tells me the direction of the opening. But if it's greater than one, then what happens is it gets skinnier or stretches. So if you look at that parent blue graph, the red graph is getting skinnier because it's being stretched vertically. However, if A is less than one, but, it, but going to be greater than zero, that's why the absolute value. So if the absolute value of A is less than one, bound by zero, then it's going to be compressing vertically. Now in other words, what that means is it's getting fatter. So it gets fatter if A is less than one, so say it was three-fourths or one-half or one-tenth, the smaller that number, the closer to zero it gets, the fatter it gets. The bigger that number, the farther away from zero it gets, the skinnier it gets. All right, so we now have broken down what each variable does to the equation. Let's look at some graphs. Now you can see this first one that we're going to graph already is in vertex form for us. So let's identify our variables and see where this graph goes. So you don't see any value on the outside of this, so we're going to assume that a is 1. h starts with a negative in front, that means h is positive, and k is also positive too. So that means the vertex is going to be located at the value 3, 2. So I'm going to go over here and plot that vertex. It also means that the axis of symmetry is located at 3. So I can kind of dot that in there. Now, if I use the parent graph, like I said, we were going to let this follow us through. Negative 2 squared is 4. Negative 1 squared is 1, 0 squared, 1 squared, 
and 2 squared. Now, these are not going to become ordered pairs here because if I plot these, they're going to go right around the origin. What I'm going to use for these points, since these are parent functions, I'm going to use these as directions. So my x is going to tell me the direction I go from my vertex left right, and the y is going to tell me my direction I go up down. So I'm going to start here at 0, 0, and then I'm going to go out 1, up 1 in both directions. That attests for these two values. Then I'm going to go out 2 from this new origin, 1, 2, and I'm going to go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 in both directions. And that will attribute those next two points. So we get our parabola to look like this. Notice that because A is 1, it didn't change the shape. That's why it was able to use the parent graph's points. The vertex was located at 3, 2. It moved to the right 3 units, and it moved up 2 units, and I got that right from the vertex. So that is our new graph. Nice and easy when it's already in vertex form. So let's look at this next example. It says, which graph is the graph of y equals x plus 2 squared minus 4? Now I'm going to break down all of the pieces to this. In this equation, a is 1. h in this equation, because this is plus 2, that means that h would have had to be negative to make that positive. And k is what it is at negative 4. So I'm looking for a graph that's going to open up, and I'm looking for a graph that moves to the left and moves down. So I know that it has to open up. It's, I'm going to eliminate these two. I'm going to move to the left two and down four. And from there, you can see that it goes out one, up one, out two, up four. So B is what I'm looking for because C moved in the wrong direction. In order for this to be a plus, I had to have a double negative. So I had to move it to the left instead of to the right. So this, our graph always moves horizontally, the opposite of what this sign is because our original graph was a negative. Okay, let's talk about the width of the graph. So it says, which function has the widest graph? Now you'll remember that we talked about what A does to the graph. And the smaller the a value is, the wider the graph. The larger the a value is, then the skinnier the graph. So I'm going to look for the one that's the widest. So the one with the widest is going to have the smallest a value. So I look at all of these a's. These two actually are the same and these two. I'm going to say that D is the very smallest A value. So the smallest A value produces the widest graph. Okay. And this one's going to ask us for the narrowest. So that's going to be the exact opposite. I'm looking for the largest A value. So I'm looking at all of these A's and the one that is the biggest, now I'm looking, remember we're looking at the absolute value of A because the negative just shows me the direction. It doesn't change the width. Since this is my largest absolute value, this one's going to have the narrowest graph. So the narrowest graph comes from the largest absolute value of the number. All right, now we're ready to try all of this. So this one says write y equals x squared plus 2x plus 4 in vertex form, then analyze the function. So in order to do this, we're going to do a series of completing the square. Because remember, we started in parent form, y equals a times x minus h squared plus k where we have that perfect square trinomial in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this. Now, when we 
traditionally completed the square, we worked with both sides of the equation. In this problem, I don't want to work with both sides of the equation because I want to keep y by itself. So I'm only going to work with one side. So as I build this, I'm going to start with x squared plus 2x and a number that's going to make this a perfect square trinomial. I'm going to leave the 4 on the outside. Now how I complete the square this time. The last time what I added here, I also added to this side, but I can't add it to this side. And by just putting in a plus, a new value here changes my equation. So what I'm going to do is whatever I add here, I'm actually going to borrow from the 4. And from borrowing from the 4, I haven't changed the value. Now I'm just playing. If I put a 3 in here, if I add a 3 and I subtract a 3, that doesn't do anything. It just adds 0. But what it does is it changes what my equations look like. Now, I'm not actually going to add a 3 in there. I need to complete the square process. I just wanted you to understand what I add, I also take away, so I'm not going to change the value here. So traditionally, we know how to complete this perfect square. We're going to take half of b and square it. Well, half of b is 1, and 1 squared is 1. So I'm going to complete the square by adding a 1, and then I'm going to borrow it from the 4. So I'm just kind of moving numbers around. That's going to leave me with x plus 1 squared plus 3. So here is my equation in vertex form. So now I'll look at my variables. a is 1. h, since this is a plus 1, h has to be negative, And k is positive 3. That means that our vertex is negative 1, 3. So I'm going to plot negative 1, 3 on here. I know that my graph is opening up and it's not getting fatter or skinnier. So that means I'm going to use the parent function to graph. So again, I go back to negative 2 squared is 4, 1, 0, 1, 4. Now I'm not plotting these five points because these five points would center me around the origin. I want to center around negative 1, 3. So I'm going to pretend like this is my new origin and now I'm going to go out 1, up 1. I'm going to go out 2, up 4. i got to fudge this a little bit because I'm out of my coordinate plane. And this is my new parabola. So it's a lot easier than having to take five points and plug them in. Now if I take any of those points on this graph right here and I plug it into my original, it should fall right on there. So that is the point negative 2, 4. That means if I plug negative 2 in there, y equals negative 2 squared plus 2 times negative 2 plus 4. This is going to give me 4 minus 4 plus 4 gives me 4. So I could take any of those points and check them with the original equation. If I've done everything right, it should fall right on my equation. All right, so now let's look at what happens if I have an A. Now this is a little tricky sometimes, but I'm going to start off the problem the exact same way. I'm going to start with negative 2x squared minus 4x plus whatever completes my square. I'm going to move my constant out, but I'm going to borrow from it whatever completes my square. So I'm not changing what I add, I also subtract. Now, in this problem, I need to pull my a out. So here's my a. I'm going to pull it out of all three of these terms. Even this term, I don't know what it is yet. I'm pulling it out of there also. So I'm factoring out that negative 2. That's going to leave me with x squared plus 2x plus whatever completes my square, but now it's going to already be divided by negative 2. 
All right, now I'm ready to complete my square. Remember not to complete the square before you pull out A. All right, so to complete my square, I'm gonna take half of two again, because that's my B, and half of two squared is one. So I'm gonna plug a one in here. That's what completes my square. Now, even though I'm putting a one in here, remember that this is negative two times all of this. So when I borrow out here, I actually have to borrow a negative two times one, which is a negative two. So these two don't look the same, but they are because of that negative two being factored at the beginning. All right, so now I'll rewrite this one more time. I'm gonna write this as negative two times x plus one squared and then two minus a negative two is plus four. So this time, I do have an A. So A looks like it's going to open down and it's going to stretch it because it's greater than one. All right, I have an H of negative one and I have a K of four. That means my vertex is located at negative one positive four. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. One, two, three, four. Oops, I'm going in the wrong direction. Negative one, positive four. That's also going to be where my axis of symmetry is located. Okay, so now how do I find my points? So I'm going to start with my parent graph points again. I said this was going to follow us through this entire lesson, and it sure has. All right, now what I do, because of this negative 2, I have to take all of these y values and multiply them by negative 2 because that's where the stretch happens. So this get, becomes 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, 1 times negative 2, 0, 1 times negative 2, and 4 times negative 2. So now I'm going to kind of eliminate this. So these are going to tell us the directions again, but I don't need this middle column. So instead of out 1, up 1, I'm going to go out 1, down 2 in both directions. So I go down 2. Instead of out 2, up 4, I'm going to go out 2 and down 8. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 in both directions. So you can see that my graph got flipped. We said that it was going to open down. It gets reflected. It stretched it because it got skinnier, and it moved it left and up 4. So analyzing all of the pieces, it moved left, it moved up, and it stretched and opened down. So this is a full standard equation into a vertex form to graph our function. So let's look at a couple examples and analyze what's happening here. It says write y equals x squared plus 6x plus 5 in vertex form, which is not true about the function. So let's look at putting it in completed square form. All right, if I take half of b, that gives me 3. 3 squared is 9, so 9 is going to complete my square. Now, I don't have any a over here, so it's a true 9 there. Now I'm going to rewrite this. This becomes x plus 3 squared, and then 5 minus 9 is going to be a negative 4. So it says the axis of symmetry is at negative 3. So h is going to be, a is going to be 1, h is negative 3, and k is negative 4, leaving my vertex at negative 3, negative 4. So the axis of symmetry is at negative 3. Well, that's true. It opens up. a is 1. That's true. My vertex is at negative 3, negative 4. That's also true. So if I look at this equation, this says that I'm supposed to have a minus here. When I worked it out, I had a plus. So this is my not true statement. Y does not equal x minus 3 squared minus 4. 
in vertex form. Let's look at one more analyzation and then I'm going to give you some practice problems to do. So it says write y equals negative 3x squared minus 6x plus 4 in vertex form. So here's one where we have an A. So I'm going to group those first two together, leaving that 4 on the outside, but I'm going to pull my A to the outside. I pull it out of the x squared, I pull it out of the 6x, and I pull it out of my completed square value. All right, now I'll complete my square. Half of 2 is 1, and 1 squared is 1, but this is not a true 1 this time. This is a negative 3 times 1, so I'm going to borrow a negative 3. That's going to give me y equals negative 3 times x plus 1 squared, and 4 plus 3 is 7. So that gives me an a of negative 3, an h of negative 1, and a k of 7, and my vertex will be at negative 1, 7. So is my axis of symmetry at negative 1? Yes. Does it open up? It looks like it's going to open down because of that negative. So that one's going to be not true. My vertex is at negative 1, 7. So you can see this graph here, negative 1, 7. You can even see that the next point is going to go 3 below. Out 1, down 3. And then so forth. So does this function open up? No, it does not. We probably could have seen that right at the beginning because our A is negative. All right, I hope that you understand what's going on and how to put that function in vertex form and how to graph. Now let's try some practice problems.